Hi there. Thanks for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. It has almost been a year since Together with Karen Lee first aired. And in that time, we have shared with you stories full of inspiration, hope for our communities and our families. But we also want to talk about and tackle some tough issues as well. Together is about supporting one another and trying to improve this great state that we all call home. When a Colorado Springs teenager came down with a deadly infection, his friends on the basketball team did not wallow in grief. Instead, they battled with him, becoming Schaefer strong. They got creative when it came to supporting their friend. Joel Hillen explains. Schaefer Reichert is usually on the court, but during this game, he was there in spirit. Everyone's kind of stayed strong, and we just kind of come together and we're like, we got to finish strong for Schaefer because that's what he would want. Schaefer spent months battling a serious illness at Children's Hospital. His teammates and coach showed their support from afar. There was a, quite a few days where we didn't know if we would have Schaefer forever. How friends helped Schaefer in his recovery. That's next on Together. Surviving a fire was only the beginning and a long list of challenges that Danette Haig faced in her young life. She has always been a fighter, and that it's that fighting spirit that called her to overcome a new challenge. Danette decided to compete in the Mrs. Colorado pageant. While it might not seem like that's a big deal to many, for Danette, it took a lot of courage. It was a chance for Danette's true beauty to shine through. And I just happened to have a burn injury from a long time ago. And I'm so much more than that. Anyone who knows Danette Haig knows that she is not defined by her scars. She wants everybody to know that beauty comes from within, not from the outside. How Danette is spreading that message and inspiring others, that's later on Together. Well, we all love to create in one form or another, so when we found out about a program in Denver helping teenagers express themselves through art, we couldn't wait to learn more about it. Mackenzie O'Keefe explains how the community came together to support and showcase their inner talents. This isn't your typical after school activity. I'm actually able to sit down and work on it for however many hours. Isabella Ocaña is one of dozens of teens who get to use this art studio for next to nothing. I have access to materials I wouldn't otherwise have. How the studio is helping get her creative juices flowing. Just a way of like self-expression that I don't think I've found in any other form. That's coming up on Together. Pretty impressive. More on those stories coming up in just a moment. First, I want to take you to a barbecue in City Park that is no doubt a little different than the barbecues that you've been to. This one centered around ending gun violence. And to do that, they needed to bring together rival gangs to break bread and promote healing. It was called Heal the Hood. Melissa Garcia and photojournalist Eric Bloomer were there. Friends came together with some who are not friends at a peaceful picnic in City Park that event organizers call Heal the Hood. You got everybody from every section, every different gang here, and they coming together. Uh, not really worried about territories or any of that stuff, but about unity. Lumumba Sayers, founder of nonprofit Heavy Hands, Heavy Hearts, helped ignite this flame to stop deadly shootings. In 2015, 12 gang murders in four months shook the city. Violence he doesn't want to flare up again. A lot of this stuff is because of poverty, because of the things that they're going through. Ain't no point even to lie, huh? If we all come together and work together as a unit, that we'll be able to solve some of the problems, be able to stop some of the gang violence, to be able to stop some of the, the senseless killings that's going on. People wearing red and others wearing blue. We have Crips, Bloods, Vice Lords, Disciples. Now stand side by side. But we're all family at the end of the day. Period. With a common goal. It's important for us to come together for the children. Children, former gang member Terrence Brewer hopes will turn to each other instead of turning to guns. So we're just trying to teach the kids that this is not the path that we want you guys to take. For many of us, shopping for healthy, fresh food is not anything that we think much about. We head to our closest neighborhood store and get what we need. But not everyone is so lucky. Many families don't have that option. They live in a food desert. But one area is about to see some changes thanks to the Westwood Food Cooperative. It celebrated its grand reopening last week. 
The grocer has a big new building with more food from local farms in it. It's also open more days, six days. The Westwood Food Co-op began when people noticed how difficult it was to get to a grocery store. So they came together to create one of their own. The co-op is for members or people who just want to drop in. They are excited to be growing. We saw in the past that necessity and we talked with the community and we decided to start with this cooperative and they can walk and get everything that they need. If you want to visit the co-op, you will find it on Morrison Road, which is not far from Alameda and Lowell. Well, we all know the flu is no joke. It can be deadly. And this winter's flu season was no exception. Schaefer Reichart not only got the virus, he also came down with a life-threatening infection. And at one point, it wasn't clear that he would survive. But friends and family rallied around him, praying around the clock. And after three months in the hospital, he finally returned home to Colorado Springs. As Joel Hillen reports, it was certainly a day to celebrate. I didn't realize like, how big of a deal it was. Six weeks ago, Schaefer Reichert arrived at Children's Hospital in Aurora from Colorado Springs by emergency helicopter. You know, even when I got flighted up here until I woke up, and, and even then it took like a couple days for me to, you know, realize what actually happened. Schaefer was fighting the flu virus when his body was attacked by another infection. Strep spread through his body, nearly claiming the young man's life. So the fact that he was able to walk out of the hospital is nothing short of miraculous. No matter what, you can just trust God to, you know, if he fights your battles for you, he's got a plan. Not only has the community come together for Schaefer in remarkable ways, his parents have been by his side every day. It takes a lot of love to do what they did for me, so for that I just thank them so much and I love them like crazy. Day 45, going home. Schaefer still has a long road ahead, one that will include physical therapy, getting back into school, and hopefully getting back to basketball. What do you miss about it? Oh, everything. Holding the ball and being with friends and just playing. He also wants to get back to being his old self and vows not to forget the lessons he's learned. Just go through life with more compassion for others and, you know, just an understanding of how hard life can get. No doubt he is going to do some things in his life. Schaefer did not have a flu shot, but he will never miss one again. His family hopes after hearing this story, everyone will make sure that they get the vaccine next flu season. Coming up next on Together, the lip sync challenge went viral last year and plenty of Colorado Police Departments took part in it. Well, now two of them are in the running to be featured on a new CBS special. Why they say making these videos, though, was never about all the attention. Together with Karen Lee, sponsored by Canvas Credit Union. We're Canvas, and we've got you covered, Colorado. Go live. Castle Rock Police and the Larimer County Sheriff's Office need your help in a good way. They are both in the running to be featured on a new CBS special called Lip Sync to the Rescue. They have created Lip Sync Challenge videos, and if they get the most votes, they win. I hopped up the plane at LAX with a dream in my cardigan. There's something breaking at the brick of every wall that's holding on at you know. <laughs> There's so much fun. Larimer County Sheriff's Office performed a song from the movie The Greatest Showman. Showman, Castle Rock picked a Miley Cyrus song. Both departments say they had tons of fun making these videos, but the best part about it was showing a softer, fun side to the people that they protect and serve. People, we have families, um, we're parents, we're kids, we're brothers, we're sisters, and um, you know, we wanted to really show that the human side of, in our case, law enforcement. And we don't want anybody to feel like there's walls there. So if this little video or the videos that went across the nation, anything we can do to help uh, make that possible is, is golden for us. Ah, we love it. If you want to help these departments make it onto the CBS special, cast your votes. You will find the link to do that at CBSDenver.com. All right, Lauren Whitney is with us now. And Lauren, I was just thinking, recently we've had so much different weather, mm -hmm. beautiful days, still some snow, a lot of people 
um, out and about. All kinds of pictures to share. Yeah, we've gotten some really great ones. Let's take a look. Again, ski season is still going strong <laughs> in some spots, but uh, Keystone, uh, this is a great picture of Gina and Greg DeMuro. Uh, they, you can see, are having a great time. A little selfie there with the family, having a great time earlier this winter, and I love this picture. This is from Nicole and Jeannie Henley uh, with their boys there, and they are just having a great time at the new Gaylord yeah. Rockies Resort. It's really nice. Really nice, yeah. and it's beautiful. Looks like they're having a nice family outing there, and I love this picture. This is Kennedy and Drew <laughs> Nedved, and they are having a great time at the Children's Museum, and I love that little guy there. Uh, just uh, you know, with, I'm, I'm not sure it looks like a lightsaber to me in this picture, but uh, he's really into it. So just great pictures of some kids and families having a wonderful time in Colorado. So many fun things to do. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting into the best season, too, but so many outdoors pictures. Yes, yeah, so keep sending us your pictures, and uh, we'll show them off on air. All right, thank you so much. Share those pictures with us. We're going to put them in the show. So you can send us an email at togetherforcolorado at cbs.com. You can also post it on social media using the hashtag for Colorado. I cannot wait to see the fun things that you've been doing around Colorado, so let us know about it. We'll be right back. Coming up in this week's Together for Colorado calendar, Monday, enjoy signature dishes from Denver's most notable female chefs at Women Cook. The event supports work options for women, a culinary job training program. Wednesday, learn how you can help young people succeed in school and beyond at the annual Denver Kids Gala. Saturday, join me and thousands of other Coloradans for Walk MS. Together, we walk to someday find a cure for people with multiple sclerosis. Find more information on these events by visiting the Together for Colorado section of CBSDenver.com. Well, a few months ago, I had the pleasure of sitting down with a woman who has a remarkable story to share. She shares it with grace, humor, and so much joy in what her life has become today. But as a child, her life took a tragic turn. Danette Haig was badly burned. She had to fight to survive, and it was painful. But her spirit blossomed, and I found her beyond inspiring. Danette Haig is not one to be defined by her scars. I used to think that I had to be flawless to be beautiful. Danette Haig has a powerful message for women. No, we are all flawed. We are all devalued. We are all imperfect. This is part of her flawless presentation, where she uses her story to help others see themselves with more love. I remember everything about that night. She was a happy, healthy fourth grader who lived on a family farm in Iowa. But in one horrific instant, my life was turned upside down. There had been an odorless and undetectable gas leak. And when my mom turned on the hot water to make coffee, um, the water heater ignited the fumes in the basement. This, this huge, ferocious, loud um, ball of flame followed those fumes throughout the basement, up the steps, and into the kitchen. And it engulfed everything in its path, and everyone, um, including my father, my baby brother, and me. My hair and my, my skin and my clothes were all on fire. I had third-degree burns covering nearly 70% of my body. I was not supposed to live. I remember thinking, this must be some kind of a nightmare. One that didn't end. Danette went through years of painful treatments, including skin grafts and reconstructive surgeries. But I lost my identity that night, who I thought I was. Danette embarked on a decades-long journey to find herself again. She became a wife, mother, pediatric nurse, an athlete. She's also a writer and an inspirational speaker. Everything that I do in my public speaking is based on the idea that scars are scars. And when I see someone else hurting, I understand that my pain and their pain are similar. And I want to feel my best. Now she's realized it's time to push herself again. I'm honoring a broken dream as a child. This broken childhood dream to be in a pageant. Danette is Mrs. Windsor in the Mrs. Colorado pageant. It's a level of courage that I've had to dig deep to find. And hopefully inspiring some women along the way that you don't have to look a certain way to feel deeply beautiful. That poor, poor little burn girl, what is she ever going to do? How it's a she message she's passionate about as she spreads the word that every woman is flawless because of their scars. If I can take what I've learned along the way and positively inspire someone else so that their journey can be better. It just doesn't get any better than that for me. It brings purpose to my pain. 
On March 30th, Danette competed in the Mrs. Colorado pageant at the Ellie Calkins Opera House. She competed in a swimsuit, an evening gown, and question and answer session. While she did not win this competition, we all know that she won in numerous other ways that night. So congrats to you, Danette, for showing us what real courage looks like. We'll meet the newest members of the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Department. We're going to tell you about the organization that helped bring these cuties from Germany. You can find more information on all of the Together for Colorado stories featured in today's show by visiting our website, cbsdenver.com. Well, art can be powerful. It can be a way to communicate or a way to just unleash your emotions. Mackenzie O'Keefe shows us how an art program in Denver is letting teenagers get creative. It's just a way of like self-expression that I don't think I've found in any other form. Isabella Ocaña is talking about her artwork, jewelry and wearable art that allows her to set her creative mind free. Being able to like physically manipulate the medium is something that I just really enjoy doing. She's been going to the teen art night since she was in sixth grade. It's a program that provides open studios for teenagers to work with professional artists and to learn more about expression through their hands, paintbrushes and pencils. I'm actually able to sit down and work on it for however many hours and I have access to materials I wouldn't otherwise have. The studio recently received a grant that allows them to lower the drop-in rate for teens with the hope that more students will be able to utilize this resource, becoming a place for art, but also a place where young minds can gather as one. This is their space. They can do what they want. They can talk about things that are important to them. They can bring in their music and really make it their time. Pretty awesome. This hope is with more funding, one day this program can be free to all students. Right now, it's about $10 a night. There are scholarships, though, to help families who may not be able to afford it. Well, here's a great example of firefighters coming together to help kids in our community. This little guy got his leg stuck in his bicycle. Well, two members of Aurora Fire Rescue were able to get him out, but in order to do that, they had to cut up his bicycle. So they used their own money to buy him a brand new one. It's a gift this family says they'll cherish. The Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office has some new canines. A nonprofit called Back the Blue Canine Force donated the dogs to the department. This is one-year-old Odakar and 14-month-old Zero. They arrived last month straight from Germany. Now, once they get used to their new home, you'll probably see them out and about helping keep your streets a little bit safer. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Together. I look forward to seeing you next week as we highlight how people are solving problems together. So please shoot me your ideas and most certainly share with me those fun photos of you out and about exploring Colorado. Until then, we leave you with a celebration for some incredible athletes. This week, the Special Olympics hosted a track and field competition for Denver students and it started with a parade. Sean Chitness shares some of those pretty exciting moments.